Pass the mic. I will reduce it slightly. I also have the small woman challenge of standing behind a lectern. Uh, thank you very much for the, the kind introduction. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm conscious you've taken an awful lot of detailed information in so far already uh, on these past two presentations, and I stand between you and all the questions you want to ask. So I will uh, have a, uh, do a short presentation with the intention of updating you on policy and development at the moment on the broader question of inward migration. Um, before I progress to that, uh, just to define inward migration, because I'm following a very uh, detailed operational update from Sandy on immigration. We've used this term to refer to everybody coming in to the island to live and make their lives and raise families. That means people from within the CTA and those coming through the immigration system. So we're trying to take a strategic view on the whole number of people coming into the island. The reason I have the privilege of making this presentation today is because as a strategically important policy, the Cabinet Office has held on to the high-level policy lead on this, but we work in very close coordination with uh, colleagues across all departments, but particularly, of course, uh, the immigration team and DFE on work permits. So without further ado. Uh, at the end of July, for those who are eagle-eyed and look at the uh, Tinwald site regularly, you'll see that we published uh, an, an interim report, if you like, on the in inward migration incentives and disincentives. This was to meet a requirement from Tinwald to uh, update by the end of July. The report is very much a work in progress. It sets out some short and long-term options that we're looking at and bringing forward proposals to ministers at the moment. So my intention today is to give you a bit of a, bit of a flavor of that. There's no way I can run through all of it. So I'm posing three of the key questions uh, for discussion and hopefully for those who have signed up to Slido to respond to on the poll. So at the beginning of the day, the Treasury Minister uh, mentioned that, uh, and, and talked very much about the, the economic strategy and that is our starting point for what inward migration is trying to achieve in the island. Um, and particularly focusing on that target of 5,000 new jobs created and filled, not just from inward migrants at all, and there was comment yesterday in the skills strategy and referenced earlier today about making sure that uh, people on island access jobs. But the uh, economic strategy absolutely recognized that a large proportion of those jobs would need to be filled by attracting people here. The red box that you can see there then focuses on the island plan uh, and the focus on the targets within that linked to the longer term economic strategy. And crucially, at the bottom, uh, the statement in the 24-25 island plan this year's that our focus is to help ensure that the overall mix of new residents contributes positively both to our economy and to our society. That recognition that it's not just about the jobs, it's about the way of life here on the island as well. Um, the report is available on the Tinwald website. If anybody's able to connect, I'm not sure that's going to be big enough for you, you can use the QR code to link directly to it. So with all good policy development, you start with the data. This is some of the high-level data. There is more in the report. Um, but the key points to, to frame today's conversation, I think, are firstly that, referring back to the, the annual population report that is now produced, well, um, remembering the longer-term context that, in population terms, our replacement rate overall uh, has been negative over, since 2014. In the last two years that we were looking at, 21 to 23, we're beginning to turn that round with net total population growth of plus 461. So we are starting to increase our population, but only slowly. And that is in the context, it's been mentioned several times today, and I suspect yesterday as well, recognizing that the rationale for all of this, uh, a key element of the rationale for all of this, is our rapidly aging population. While that brings, I am confident, 
greater wisdom uh, uh, in the population and a huge number of people who are actively contributing both economically as long as they wish to and to our society in so many different rich ways, there is also the natural uh, challenge of aging that increases demand, particularly on health and social care. So the projection is there that um, by December, by 2040, about 27.2% of the population will be aged over 65. Um, and that is the challenge that we are wanting to meet. So that moderating, uh, that population growth that we're starting to see is moderating our aging population, but more is needed. Now looking at the more recent data in terms of the economy, and again, I'm conscious because it was mentioned earlier, I'll canter through it. Um, we have that uh, demand in the labour market that, that's been referenced. It was already talked about 900 plus vacancies. That's equivalent to about four and a half vacancies for every job seeker at the moment in 2023. And I believe that that's, looks like it's consistent this year as well. So we have that demand, uh, and as the Treasury Minister said, is constraining economic development when businesses can't find the people that they need. What we've added to that in our analysis this year is that the impact on public services. So, of course, yes, um, the number of people coming in, the increasing population, does create additional demand on public services. Um, that is outweighed, actually, by the increasing demand of the ageing population, but you put the two together, that does increase our demand on public services. It's important to say that the inward migration also increases the supply of some of those key health and care workers uh, that we need. So as you can see on the slide, in 2023, it was just under 19% came straight into our health and care services. What we're finding internally at the moment is that public services can, on the whole, manage and respond to that increasing demand where it can be forecasted. We have significant gaps in our data. And we have real need to improve that early notice of who's coming and what services they may need in order to help us meet uh, that demand more effectively. So that's where we are now. This is my one slide trying to, uh, if you like, capture the key factors that we need to balance as an island community when we think about the inward migration that we want. Yes, we need more workers, as the economic strategy says, to fill jobs and grow our econ economy. We absolutely need people to meet our growing health, uh, our social needs, particularly health and care workers. But we need to do that whilst preparing for and managing the impact on public services and managing the impact on our communities making sure that coming here is positive for everybody who comes here, as well as positive for the communities that welcome them. And we know that that is an important aspect to pay attention to. Sorry, that way. The two additional factors that I do think are, are crucial as well, we, we need to do so while meeting the requirements of the common travel area. The minister uh, eloquently articulated the importance of that and safeguarding our processes from criminals, and both the previous uh, presentations talked to those factors, which is why, uh, in the questions I'm about to pose to you, I'm focusing on how we achieve the balance um, on the other four factors in particular. And those questions are, hopefully you will be able to see them in the Slido poll now if you wish to express any views on them. And you'll also be able to raise your questions in the Q&A, which I will get to as fairly quickly so that we can get those views from you. So I will briefly give a little bit of outline of these questions, and they will be up during the Q&A as well. For those I saw just taking pictures of it, don't worry, they won't disappear. So first of all, what do you think is the most important incentive that we need in place to attract the workers that we need in the Isle of Man? You'll see in the report published at the end of July, we're reviewing the current incentives that are in place. And apologies, because of time, I won't go into what each of them are, but we can address that as useful. And we're thinking about these two other key incentives, 
Uh, uh, some, uh, somebody earlier today talked about returning students. One of the things that we're looking at is student loan repayments as an incentive for uh, Manx-based students, resident students to return, potentially for other graduates as well. Um, and reducing or waiving the fees for further and indefinite leave to remain. We find in our analysis that about 35% of those who come here leave within five years. Is there something that we can do uh, that will make a difference to keeping that talent on island? Second question, uh, do you welcome the idea of more disincentives, particularly financial disincentives, such as higher salary requirements, the health care surcharge, uh, to limit workers coming here? Um, the healthcare ones are in the middle, are uh, on the left-hand side. I'm, I'm struggling with it being two ways, sorry. Uh, on the left-hand side and in the report, we, look, we outline an idea that we are investigating at the moment. I say investigating because we are not recommending it yet, but looking at whether there is a financial disincentive that we could introduce to protect the housing market from those who are economically inactive coming here, so that's one option. Um, and importantly, and Sandy uh, re referenced this in a bit of detail, we're undertaking an immigration policy review at the moment. That's not just about disincentives, but significantly within that, as we are looking at greater alignment to the UK immigration framework. Uh, and then looking at what space we need to continue to meet our economic strategy objectives. If you've been watching the news, you will see that some of the changes that the UK has made recently are about tightening immigration choices, about raising salary thresholds, potentially reducing dependence for some pathways, um, adding in other financial disincentives. All of that is under review, and we will be bringing policy proposals forward in due course. So, but there are real changes there. But of course, that is just on the visa uh, pathways, not for those coming in from the CTA. And the third question. Thinking longer term, one of the, and indeed I know this has been a subject for debate at least since the early 2000s, uh, and is absolutely uh, a question that we are looking at as well. What do you think of the longer term idea of legally controlling residency in the Isle of Man, underpinned by a registration system for all residents? A Residency Act was uh, developed a number of years ago um, in this vein. Typically, and this is a very rough outline of what it, this sort of legislation would do, Typically, this sort of legislation legally controls people's access to the housing market and to public services. You will have a registration number ID that enables you then to access rental market, housing market, public services. Typically, they are introduced when jurisdictions are looking to constrain population rather than grow, but they do provide us, they, what such a system would provide us with enhanced data, for sure, and significantly more agile controls, uh, because we'd be able to uh, have more data to then introduce those controls on. An example, uh, jurisdiction I've just been working in previously, uh, is, is Jersey in that. The implications of that sort of system are, are that all of us as island residents would need the, those unique IDs as well. Maybe that is an idea whose time has come that we all have our identification for uh, uh, accessing public services. Um, but it would be necessary because at the point of accessing services, we'd need to know who everybody is. Not, it doesn't work to have just your inward migrant, like me, having my ID and a resident not. Uh, it, it's not easy to administer that way. That sort of registration system would be significant development. It could be a use, incredibly useful backbone to public service provision. But I'm raising it here, uh, for here, and it's raised in the uh, paper because it is a significant change, and it's one that obviously needs to be understood by the island before we considered bringing it in. So three big questions. 
They are not all of the, que the questions and the, the subject matter that we touch upon in the report, so please do have a look at that. It is coming to Tinwald for debate uh, next month. Um, but for now, what I would like to do is encourage you to engage on Slido. We'll move to the uh, Q&A panel, and you can uh, raise your thoughts on this and the other presentations at the same time. And I think I've stolen your words, James. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you.